Hey, Shalom. Shalom. Uh, before I get started, I'd just like to give all praises, glory, and honor. Duan Tiyahal, Bahashem El Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and that do teach well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Much love unto the Akim that's out there pushing this truth in sincerity and not for vain glory. So, you know, I couldn't wait to bring this out, man. I was waiting. Um, I'm going to title this uh, lesson called The Covenant of Salt. And um, I was inspired to do this lesson by the verse of the day. Well, it's not the verse of the day anymore. This was yesterday. But I'm going to still use it. Uh, this is Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Okay, and, and uh, this is very important, especially when you go on the highways and hedges, and when you do your sit-downs, and really when you interact with anybody. Um, you, your words have to be seasoned with salt. And, what, and how, do you, how do you get seasoned with salt? Well, one that comes through experience, and now through experience, you, you have to study. Okay, you have to study, you have to look up your words in the book, and um, you, you have to give an account for your faith. Especially when, when it comes to proving the world wrong. Right? And salt, by the way, salt is a, a preservative, a natural preservative. And that's the oldest way to uh, preserve and cure meats. Right? Now they have different methods, but there are artificial ways to do it in this society. And they're not, nat but they're not natural and they're not healthy. But the best way to do it is, is by using salt. Okay? So it's very important that you study to show thyself approve. You look up your words, you go into the Hebrew, you go into the Greek, you go into the Latin, you go, in, you go into these dictionaries, you read, you watch videos, you get history books, you watch history lessons online, you study from your teachers, man, because that, that seasons you with the salt. And ultimately, who, who seasons you? It's really Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Okay? Because you're set up to go out there and to prove this the world wrong. To prove these people out here wrong. But the way you do that is by speaking intelligently. And um, you, should never, you should never suppress that. You should never think, oh, I don't got to look that up. Oh, I don't got to say it that way. No, you should, always, you should always want to better yourself. You should always want to expand on your vocabulary, man. Expand. Because there's always something to study. There's always something to look up. Right? So now, I want to bring this scripture out. Um, <clears throat> Romans 12. Before I get to other scriptures. Because we're sacrifices out here. Okay? And if you go into the law, which is Leviticus chapter 2, verse 13. It's required of you by law. It's a command that any sacrifice... That you bring forth to the Lord. It has to be salted. And that includes you man. That includes you. So it's mandatory. That you stay salted. In this truth man. You know don't deny yourself. Being salted. You know don't, don't think. Oh I don't got to look that up. The Lord knows my heart. No go the extra step. Get salty. Okay so now. Now let me get. Uh. Romans 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Okay, and that's reasonable and acceptable. And it's holy. So it's reasonable for you to stay salty in this, in this thing of ours. It's reasonable. It's the reasonable thing to do. And it's acceptable and it's holy. Right? So, so why wouldn't you want to be holy? Why wouldn't you want to be acceptable? That's why the scripture says, study to show thyself approved. Right? You're studying to be approved by who? Yahweh Basham El Shai. You're not studying to, approve, to be approved by your, your, own, your own vanity or, or the vanity of the world or to look good in the eyes of others. You're studying to look good in the sight of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. So this is reasonable and acceptable and holy. Right? So now, let me get the law. Let's back that up with the law here. 
This is Leviticus chapter 2, verse 13. And it says, And every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. Okay, salt. Like I said, salt is a preservative. Right? It's a preservative. You, by you being salted, it preserves you for that divine grace, man. Okay? The divine things that the Lord has to offer you. By you studying, by, by you supping with the Lord, by you getting seasoned, that actually preserves your life, man. So you must want to do it. Take that extra step. Neither shall thou suffer the salt of thy covenant of thy power to be lacking. So you must salt up your meat, man. You got to salt yourself up. Get as much knowledge as you can. Expand your vocabulary as much as you can. Look up everything, man. I look up everything. I hit that blue letter. I put that on my phone. I look up every single word of the precept I read. I look up everything to the best of my ability. I'm not perfect. I do fall short. Right? But I try to the best of my ability. I try to look everything up. So when I go out there and somebody asks me a question, I know my shit. Right? You can't trick me. And if I don't know something, I, know, I, I at least know the story. And the concept of, of whatever is being brought out. And then I can always go back and then I can give you an answer. But you can't trick me. Right? So it says, Neither shall thou suffer the salt of thy covenant of thy power to be lacking from thy meat offering. Now, um, I'm just going to relate to you tribes. All the tribes, man. Just look at your cuisine. Now, I'm a Benjamite. So-called, anyway. I'm going to say it like that. I'm a so-called Benja Benjamite. It appears... Then I'm a Benjamite because I'm from the land of Benjamin. Um, but I notice with a lot of Benjamite food, especially from the island of Jamaica, they use a lot of salt in their meat. And I'm not talking about this cheap table salt. I'm talking about that good salt, that pink salt, that raw, that black salt, that good healthy salt that is, that is good for you. And then obviously they use all these other spices like for their oxtail, their curry goat, the jerk chicken. Okay, their sweet buns. But you know, you know what, you know what all their all their dishes have in common? They have salt in it. You always need that salt, and it should never be lacking. <laughs> you know, uh, even like Levi, Levi puts salt and spices in his food, and food's good. You know, you have the tribes that are that are on the west coast of Africa. You know, they they have a lot of jollof rice. Rice. You know, the fufu. Uh, um, you know, their stews. Hearty stews that they make, their, their tomato stews. All of that stuff has salt in it, man. It's a key ingredient. It's good for you. It's very hearty. Right? So anyway, in all the tribes, they put salt in their food. But that's how the Lord, He likes His food. That's how the Lord likes His sacrifice. He likes you to be salty. So if the Lord's going to sacrifice you and eat you, you want to taste good. Right? Now that's holy, reasonable, and acceptable. So you got to stay salty, man, in a good way. With all thine offerings, thou shalt offer salt. Now, let's hit the last uh, precept. Let's go to <clears throat> Mark chapter 9, verse 50, last verse. It says, Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. That's right. And you don't want to lose the salt. You don't want to lose that divine grace. The Lord opening up your mind to communicate. You don't want to lose that. Right? You don't want to lose the ability to study, to go into these scriptures. And you know, my small little, my small little milliseconds in this truth, I've seen a lot of men fall out because, you know, they lost the salt. They lost that flavor. In the sight of the Heavenly Father. And they were sifted out. They were good men. They were great men. You know they were very charitable. But that's not enough. You got to do your part. And you got to go. You got to go more in. And you got to expand. Expound. And expand. On the things that the Lord has shown you. Don't just. Don't just stay stagnant like a toad man. You got to move forward. You know there, there was one individual who recently fell out. You know he thought it was just good to come out. And uh. Say your little two precepts and 
make it sound nice and then uh you know he he, he kind of just stopped studying man he stopped doing what he was supposed to do and good brother i like i love the guy he was a good guy but you know he lost his salt and um it's unfortunate but that's just the way how the way the lord wanted it so it, it, it's not good to lose your salt man always stay salty always stay salty now i, I kind of exhausted this i brought my point out so um, i hope this was edifying until next time i just want to give all praises glory and honor do unto yahweh bashim yashai bahashim rakakwadash double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone kwam yashal and above the ball shalom